Well, I've been at New York Life for 14 years now. I joined New York Life a little over a year ago. I've been with New York Life for now three years. I have been with New York Life for five years. I've had the opportunity to work with my clients to enhance their financial position, create wealth accumulation strategies, achieve a secure retirement, all while growing their net worth and preserving their legacy. I think a lot of the work that we do at New York Life is gratifying because we help customers. New York Life not only cares about its agents, but it cares about its clients as well. One of the things that really impressed me in joining the company was just the company's commitment to the community. You know, we're very much encouraged to donate our time and our money to various organizations. When I saw that New York Life was given to Hampton, I was really, really pleased. I, you hear parents say a lot, they always want to like give their kids more than what they had. You want to give them more than what you had. You want to give them, you know, higher quality of education, more resources. As a student at Hampton University, I was a part of the marching band. I had a unique opportunity to be a part of a brotherhood of Alpha Phi Alpha through the Gamma Iola chapter. And it's great to see where my personal, professional, and my passion merge together. And that's what I found here at New York Life. I had my first son when I was a junior in high school. So I was a 16 year old mom. So I came to Hampton with my infant child for high school day. And I was blown away. I felt like Hampton saved my life. I beat being a statistic, graduating from Hampton in four years, being a team mom, and the company that has provided me with so much is giving back to my alma mater. I don't really think that you can put into words how just seeing that support pour in uh, from New York Life to Hampton, how much that means to me. I knew from the beginning I wanted to attend Hampton. There was no other school that I wanted to go to, but once I stepped on campus, it just confirmed that feeling. Feeling that family feeling, uh, you know, the minute you step onto an HBCU campus is one of the things that definitely attracted me to Hampton University. One thing about Hampton, and particularly the student leadership program that I've carried with me like my entire life is the model of going above and beyond. I have never stopped trying to do that with my career, with my family, just become part of my DNA. Attending Hampton University was by far one of the best decisions I made. While you're there, you take away a lot of great things. You take away a great education, friendships, experience, great networks, and great moments. So one of the things that New York Life is doing is giving back to enhance that experience where others who are coming along will have these great takeaways that I had the opportunity to experience as well. I'm proud to be a part of Hampton University. Class of 1997. Class of 1998. Class of 2006. Class of 2008. Ogre Phi Ogre 9. Quintessence 3. Ogre Phi Ogre 12. Onyx 7. What an amazing and great start to this conversation we're having tonight. Welcome everyone to this conversation. My name is Dr. Felicia Blow. I serve as Associate Vice President for Development at Hampton University. I'm a 1988 graduate with count them one kid who's a graduate and another who's enrolled here at the university. And I am thrilled to serve as your facilitator for this evening's program. So again, welcome to this important philanthropy discussion with New York Life and its amazing generosity to Hampton. This program is intended to introduce New York Life to our alumni and our students and provide details on this wonderful partnership we have. Hampton, New York Life, you see my background there, you show we are there together. And why, if you happen to be looking for a new opportunity, New York Life should be at the top of my, your list. This conversation also is part of Hampton's annual week of giving, and what better a conversation than philanthropy, academic, student support. So let's just jump right into it. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce each of our speakers tonight. So Tracy, you can turn your camera on so everybody can see your lovely face. Tracy is an experienced marketing professional with over 20 years in various industries. And currently she is a corporate vice president of marketing, supporting the group benefit solutions line of business at New York Life Insurance Company. 
Tracy was educated at the real HU, right? Hampton University, where she received her Bachelor of Science degree in marketing. She's gone on to do a whole lot of stuff. If I read this, we will be here all night just with introduction. So welcome, Tracy. Next, Sarah Carter. Where are you, Sarah? Yes, there she is. Sarah has over 23 years in human resources in her background, and she's worked in higher education, financial services, insurance, and with other corporate institutions. She joined New York Life in 2016 as a recruiting manager on the talent acquisition team, and she's managed recruitment teams for the corporate business units and built out the rec uh, recruiting coordinator team. And she currently serves as chief administrative officer for that team. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. All right, now we have Sharita McKeever. Sarita, I know you all saw her in that video and you said, the Grammy goes to, no, 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 it's not Grammy, the Oscar goes to, right? Um, Sharita McKeever is a proud graduate of Hampton class of 2008, where she majored in broadcast journalism with a minor in political science. While at Hampton, she was part of student services, the Rho Alpha chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and she worked in the Office of Sports Information. She joined New York Life in 2017 after seeing an article in Black Enterprise about New York Life's $50 billion campaign specifically targeting Black America. She's also done a ton of stuff, but I'm gonna start stop there. Sarita, welcome. Next, Robert Williams Jr. Rob, I'm gonna call you Rob, <laughs> is a 2006 graduate, Ogre Phi Ogre 12, and he majored in print journalism. While at Hampton, he won the Robert S. Abbott Award as sports editor of the Hampton Script newspaper. Rob has been with New York Life for 14 years and has been spent time working on various product lines, such as life insurance products and employee benefits. Thank you, Rob. Welcome. Next, a young man I've talked to a lot over the years. He is an avid fundraiser for this institution and he's so engaged in the university. Horace Allen, come on down. Horace is a native of Richmond. Richmond, Virginia. He attended Hampton 1993 to 97, graduating with a BS in management. He has a master's in divinity from Northeastern Seminary at Roberts Wesleyan College. He joined New York Life in 2019 and qualified for executive counsel in his first full year as an agent. Um, he also was the 2020 Charlotte Go TAS Agent of the Year. Um, he currently serves on the board of directors for the Dowd YMCA in um, Charlotte. And what are you a member of, Horace? I'm, I'm going to let you say it yourself. Um, you, I'm sure you would have put more energy into it, but uh, <laughs> initiated into the Gamma Iola, Gamma Iola chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you. You know, it. You know what I was going to say, A5. You know, <laughs> Horace is in the house. Wait, how are Next, the all right, all right. You go. We're gonna come back to that. You can. You let's get some energy going because it's gonna be a fun conversation. Um, Dr. Demetrius Geddes. Oh, uh, Demetrius is one of my favorite people here at Hampton. I work closely with him. He is the assistant dean of the School of Engineering and Technology, and he's also the chair of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here at Hampton. He earned his BS in electrical engineering from Hampton, his master's and PhD in electrical and computer engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. And he has extensive research experience in the areas, and I gotta make sure I say these right, Demetrius, integrated optoelectronics, <laughs> electromagnetics, I can say that. And he's worked at uh, as a research and de design engineer at a whole bunch of places, including Motorola and Bell Laboratories. So glad to have you on the on the team tonight. Next, I want to introduce you to another smart, amazing um, young lady from Hampton, Dr. Christy Norwood. 
Christy is the director of the Student Counseling Center here at Hampton. She's a licensed clinical psychologist and recently worked at the Hampton Veterans Affairs Medical Center as assistant chief of psychology, working pr primarily with veterans dealing with post-traumatic traumatic stress disorder. Dr. Norwood has always been a mental health advocate, program developer, and has as a passion to help decrease the stigma of mental health, particularly in the African-American community. Welcome, Christy. We're going to have a good time tonight, right? All right, Charles Weitz. Where are you, Charles? I'm, I, you know, this young man, I, let me just say this. He graduated from Hampton with a BS in electrical engineering. But do you know, at night, part-time, while working, he also went to New York Law School and Baruch's College, uh, Baruch College's Zeekland School of Business, where he got his JD and his MBA. They grow them well at Hampton University. So he um, has worked at the MTA. He's planned and directed and co uh, coordinated various multi-million dollar projects. Um, after he uh, finished his schooling, he began his legal career at the international corporate law firm of Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison LLP. And he joined New York Life um, in the Office of General Counsel in August 2005 and is currently an Associate General Counsel in the Variable Products Group. Welcome, Charles. Impressive. Next, we have Maria. We're almost there. I know it's uh, more people than we can shake a stick at, right? But it's, that makes for an even more interesting conversation. Maria is the current vice president of the New York Life Foundation, the charitable foundation created by New York Life Insurance Company. In addition to her foundation duties, uh, Maria is also corporate vice president of New York Life's corporate responsibility department. And she assists with developing and managing the national grants and grants making strategy for New York Life. She provides leadership to support initiatives. And um, she joined New York Life back in the old days, 2000. So she, this is a known quantity and she's gonna break it down for us. And now I'm gonna ask these two young people to both turn their cameras off so you can see them. Niara and Zach. And quite frankly, to me tonight, these two amazing, just handsome and beautiful people are the reason you're tuning in. This is the future of our nation, the future of our institution, the future maybe of New York life if y'all decide to go that way. And these two young people are both juniors here at Hampton University and are rock stars. This is why. Not only are they excellent students, they both have won $40,000 a year scholarships. Let me say that again. $40,000 a year scholarships. One year, 40,000 and they get two of them from New York Life because of their um, academic prowess, because of their discipline and rigor. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about both of them. Niara is a Hampton University junior electrical engineering major, and she's minoring in leadership studies. She maintains a 3.6 GPA, and um, her interests include engineering economy, circuit analysis, and digital electronics. I'm laughing because I don't do that, Niara. <laughs> so I'm just so proud of you. She is a recipient of the $40,000 scholarship plus internship with New York Life. And in addition to her internship with New York Life, she's involved with the Stanford NASA University Leadership Initiative and National Science Foundation Excellence in Research Initiative. Oh, so Zach. Zach is a, a Hampton University Dean's List Golden Key Honor Society member with a GPA of 3.49. He is studying a very difficult discipline, economics, truly. And maybe you can help us out with this inflation thing tonight, Zach, okay? Um, 
He uh, has a strong understanding of economics and finance and his hobbies. What he's not in school getting all these high GPAs is include investing, personal finance, real estate, crypto, and sports. He started his own sports blog, which now has amassed, get this, over 40,000 followers. Unbelievable. Hats off to you. In addition, <laughs> he likes the stock market. He toys around in that a little bit. And he's pursuing his real estate license. Oh my God. Thank you all. Thank you. We're going to come back to you all in a little bit. And I'm going to tell you, everybody who joined us tonight, what's going to happen. We have structured the program to be in three parts. The first part is going to deal with New York life's culture, philanthropy, community engagement. And they're going to be individuals to tell you about all you need to know about New York life in that regard. Then part two, we're going to be talking about talent, the acquisition of talent, the uh, programs that Sarah and her team use to uh, recruit talent. And they have a high degree of interest in um, the African-American student population. The last section, I think you all are gonna really get a kick out of, our alumni, and there are a bunch of alumni from Hampton who also work at New York Life who will be part of the conversation. They are trailblazers in their own right. They're trailblazers. And you're going to hear from them, not so much of a scripted conversation, but they're going to tell you from their heart why they chose Hampton, why they chose New York Life, and why those considering either of those entities should step up. So Sarah, Maria, Christy, let's get this party started. And Horace, where are you? So I know you have some specific insights you want to share with us about um, the foundation. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be here and share about New York Life and the New York Life Foundation. For those who don't know us, we've been around since 1979. And I believe we're around and we're one of the oldest corporate foundations is because we really align to the mission of New York Life, the company. New York Life has three core values, humanity, financial strength, and integrity. And we put humanity into action every day just based on all of the individuals that are here tonight talking about their experience at Hampton and New York Life, how they come together. Why? Because the culture is aligned. One, I can tell you a little bit about the foundation, but I really, it's, it's about the people that really work at New York Life and put these um, principles into action. So the foundation actually has a main purpose. You know, our focus is to prepare children, young people, to live their best lives, really at pivotal moments, providing them with tools and skills that they need to do so. Invest in initiatives in three core areas. Our childhood bereavement strategy, because one in 13 children will lose a parent or a sibling by the age of 18. So making sure that they have the support system that they need to be successful in life is pivotal and really aligns to us as a life insurance company. One, educational enhancement. During out-of-school time, right? So summer, extended day, early mornings. We know that middle school students need more support and basically providing foundational skills during that critical time in their lives will really set them up for future success. So we do concentrate in educational enhancement in middle school. And then social justice. It's always been incorporated in the first two pillars, but we really have taken a, a, an intentional look at how we can do better, how we can really incorporate that. And lastly, how we just, it's not just about financial dollars, because the foundation since 1979 has invested nearly $390 million. We think that it's about engagement, engaging our community. New York Life has an operation that's very unique. One, we're a mutual. Two, we have locations in every state with, through our general offices where our agents work and live and our employees. And they really are representing what we do. Sarah, next slide. And as I mentioned, these are our three areas of focus, but we also support our people where they live and work. And I think that's the true story because bereavement support aligns with our life insurance business. Middle school transition aligns with foundational wealth, ensuring that people have the skills to move forward. So I know that our panel is going to talk about that. And then social justice, 
really identifying the needs of communities and, and rising to that occasion. So the New York Life Foundation, yes, it's about philanthropic investments, making the right um, choices for charities, but it's also about aligning that with our people in our community. And I think we do that exceptionally well. And I'm so proud to represent that. I mean, I just got to look at this number, $32 million in 2021. That's that's walking the talk, putting your money where your mouth is. And Christy, I want to bring you in the conversation as we close down the PowerPoint here, because I know you and Maria have been in particular working together on Hampton students and the whole issue of loss and grief. Can you help us unpack that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. And so kind of as Maria said, you know, the vision of New York Life Foundation really connects well with the the vision and the mission of the Student Counseling Center, which is really to be the office at Hampton University that leads the way in providing emotional support and care to our students while they're there. And as Maria highlighted, this is one of the most critical periods of time for them of development. And so some of our students, um, especially with the rise in the pandemic, have experienced losses, right? They've experienced these transitions. And so not only is the financial support um, very critical, but also that collaboration that Hampton has developed with New York Life Foundation in terms of being able to meld the emotional support with also also the financial support has been integral um, since the Can I say this? You know, I work with a lot of companies and individuals, and they constantly ask me, how are the students doing? How are your students doing? Can you give us a glimpse in what you're seeing with our student population, particularly as they've had to deal with COVID? Yeah, absolutely. We have a very resilient student population. Um, but I, you know, just like all of us, I think within the last couple of years, we've all struggled, whether it's been moments of nervousness and anxiety, moments of sadness, moments of concern around COVID, or even losses that some of us have experienced. And so I think if we kind of go inward as we as we think about this, what we're all dealing with, our students are dealing with, as well as trying to navigate some of the social justice pieces, as Maria kind of talked about, and just if we all think back what it was like to be 18, 19, 20, (laughs) right? So just trying to navigate. Some of us are going way back, okay? (laughs) Exactly. So no matter how close or how far away that is from where you are now, you know, just thinking about all of those pieces. So I would say overall, our students are doing well, but, you know, we have seen some of our students sort of struggle. And so it's been great to have financial and emotional resources to support them during that time. And just in case you all are wondering, what are they talking about? What what is New York life underwritten? We're going to talk about that in part two, when Sarah is going to break down and demystify, where did the money go? Where did that million dollars that they gave Hampton University get a portion to? But before we go there, to me, Horace, I think this conversation about diversity, equity, inclusion, and making the right choice when you choose the company you go to, is really important as it relates to New York life. And so I know you have a couple of slides you want to share, right? Absolutely. Okay. Very good. So um, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you very much. And when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, this is not new to New York life. Uh, We've been doing this over the years. Um, And what we've actually done, we've doubled down. Um, there's some numbers that even before I get into this slide, things that facts that we want to be aware of. Uh, one number is 154,000. 154,000 is the average net worth difference between the black community and the white community from a net worth. That number is persistent and it's growing. Another number, 1.3. 1.3 is the number that blacks are more likely to have student debt. times more than their white counterpart. Another number, 8% versus 26%, that's the inheritance rate. 8% of people in the black community receive an inheritance versus 26% of those in the white community. And then lastly, 228 to 240, if we don't do anything, that's how long it would take in years to close or reduce the racial wealth gap. So what have we done with that? Um, in 2021, New York Life has introduced the RISE Empowerment Plan. Uh, RISE being the acronym, as you can see here on the screen, which stands for Reach, 
inspire, secure, and empower. And we're, our purpose is to change the financial future of Black America. We're looking at a 10-year plan where we're going to introduce three pillars, which you can go to the next screen for me, which is going to be based on these three pillars of financial empowerment, where we're going to drive the creation of intergenerational wealth to the African-American community, educational empowerment, where we're going to launch financial awareness and literacy programs in partnership with our external partners, especially in the African-American educational brands, and also community empowerment, developing key partnerships and programs with organizations which are focused on bridging the wet racial wealth gap in our nation. So with this, that brings us to why we're here and why we partner with Hampton University to create key stakeholders and key external partnerships that we can help build to rise together. And I love that, Horace. I just completed my, um, I say just, it was last year, my dissertation. And it was about fundraising at HBCUs, which is what I do. and happened to be named the dissertation of the year. Um, but who's, who's, who's bragging? Um, but the one thing that you note, I think is worth restating why you chose this HBCU to help advance those three pillars. Can you, can you share a little more about that? Yeah. And I, and I think it was already mentioned earlier, um, in regards to how do you find external partnerships that share the same values? Um, and I think one of the things that parallel in my time at Hampton University, as well as New York Life, in regards to looking outwardly and how we can help others. Uh, one of our key values is, our, is humanity. And that's one thing that we consider this to be a clause in humanity. And it's not just a check in the box, but something actionable that we can put in play. That's awesome. So you truly are walking the talk and helping people. Um, move forward. That overcoming the generational wealth gap strategy. Um, Horace, you got to come back and tell us how that's going to play out. What specifically is New York Life thinking in terms of its education and engagement? Because I know um, Sarah is going to talk to us a little bit about what specifically New York Life funded, but the parents of our students, alum, um, friends of the institution, that's the kind of education that will change and transform lives. So um, it is 627. We're going to keep it moving. Um, thank you all, Maria, Christy, Cora, Sarah, you stay with us because um, we're going to now talk about getting a job at New York Life. <laughs> and um, I want to invite to the, to the main stage, if you will, um, Dr. Demetrius Geddes, along with Sarah and Niara and Zach. And I, I just love seeing these young, fresh faces. Um, and I'm so enthused about you all being here tonight. And the way of housekeeping, not sure if you all know this, this program is being um, streamed live on our Office of Alumni Affairs Facebook page. When we get to the close of the program, at the bottom of your screen, at least that's where it is on mine, there's this little box called Q&A. Uh, we are asking, you will get an opportunity to ask every single human being you see on the screen a question. Put your question in the QA, okay? And you can start putting them there now so we can make sure we get to them um, so everybody can be part of the conversation. But Sarah, I want to come to you. Miss Talent Manager Extraordinaire, mm -hmm. Recruiter Extraordinaire, why did New York Life, why do you have an interest in our students in Hampton? Absolutely. So from a campus recruiting perspective, um, you know, we have targeted programs in technology, underwriting, finance, just to name a few. But beyond that, we know the value of hiring strong campus talent and supporting them as they go through their professional development and into their careers. So, you know, over the past several months, Hampton students have expressed strong interest in our businesses and they possess that drive the mindset and the skill sets that we appreciate. So that's why we're so interested. And they're good. Yes. They're good. good. That's what I want to say. So um, I know you have a slide that you want to review as well about the, um, the impact of the gift. 
that. Yeah, is. sure. If you could pull that up, I'll just um, go through it really briefly. Very good. So definitely want to say it's a pleasure to be part of this event, first and foremost, and just to share what we've been partnering with uh, Hampton on campus with students and alumni. Unfortunately, my colleague, Margaret Miranda, could not attend this evening, but she and I are both very excited to continue building out our professional development efforts, both on campus and with alumni. So I just wanted to share a little bit uh, with everyone about what we've been doing so far. So on the slide uh, that you see here, just a little bit by way of background. So this was last May that we first were thinking about this and planning and looking into you know, how we can make this a really strong partnership and um, what, what would be additive in the partnership between New York Life and Hampton. So once the, the million dollar grant was made, we got right to work. So our New York Life Foundation, obviously, um, our Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Center, and those of us in talent acquisition came together and with, in conjunction with members of faculty and staff at the school, um, really came up with these six pillars that we identified to kind of maximize the reach to the students uh, and also to engage with alumni. So just to quickly kind of outline the areas here. So bereavement support, um, you know, Maria spoke to this a little bit already because it is a core philanthropic focus for the New York Life Foundation. So that was critically important to include. Um, gap funding support, you know, being able to enable soon to be grads to reach that academic finish line is extremely important. Um, scholarship awards, so uh, supporting sophomores through seniors um, in, in awarding these to deserving students. We also have scholarship awards plus internship opportunities for juniors or what we like to call rising seniors because uh, they're on their way there. And then for student engagement, um, so far we've already recently presented to students um, from our technology and actuarial businesses uh, about their areas of expertise. And there was a high level of engagement uh, and interest from those students. So we're excited to continue those connections. And then for alumni engagement, you know, today is our first official alumni event, but we're looking forward to planning many more of these. Um, Dr. Blow, do you wanna go? Thank you. Um, and so just to dive a little bit more into the scholarships and internships, a little bit of background. So we've been working on this for a little while. Um, and in fall of last year, there was quite a rigorous selection process um, undertaken by the Hampton faculty to really get to the heart of identifying students um, to participate in the scholarship plus internship program. So, you know, GPA requirement, current study areas, you know, other areas or other criteria were certainly used, but we also wanted to make sure that the students who are participating with the scholarship plus internship um, had a need-based uh, re applicant requirement. Um, we want to make sure that the funds for this important step, getting a scholarship plus internship, um, are going in the right direction and really setting somebody up to be successful. So we just wanted to ensure that money and opportunities are, are going into the right hands. Um, so obviously, you know, two students were selected, Niara and Zachary. So we're very excited to have them joining our technology and our group benefit solutions businesses this summer. And then there were 16 additional students who were awarded renewable scholarships uh, for the 2022 to 2023 school year. So if the scholarship recipient uh, is currently a sophomore or junior, their scholarship does have the potential to be reviewed for renewal for the following year. So we're super okay. excited about oh, how, how this has been set up and works. A $20,000 scholarship and a $40,000 scholarship are not common scholarships at this institution. Wouldn't you agree, Demetrius? I mean, can you talk about the importance and why this is so great? Well, first off, uh, Dr. Blow, uh, thanks for uh, putting uh, this, this program together as well as uh, helping us, help Hampton University uh, form this partnership with New York Life. Uh, so this has been an awesome uh, experience working with you. Um, I'm trying to get some of your energy, but I'm not, ready. I'm not there yet. 
So, uh, but this, yeah, this, this is very, very important as, as assistant dean. Uh, the three things that I try to focus on is student success, our curriculum enhancement, and our, our research and educational infrastructure. And this partnership is definitely helping those first two with student success and with our curriculum enhancement. So in terms of student success, I'm concerned with recruiting students, retaining students, and graduating students. And so if you, if you think about this program, uh, it's definitely going to help retain top talent like uh, Niara and Zach, and it's going to help them uh, to uh, pay their bill for that, that senior year and help them graduate. So that's, that's awesome. But at the same time, even this program and uh, you know, the publicity from it is helping us recruit um, students to our program as well too, because Hampton is not, not a, a cheap institution to attend, we are an excellent uh, institution. It's excellent. <laughs> and so we don't give full rides anymore. This is the closest to a full ride that we, we our, our students will have in terms of at least one year. And so this is this is, is an awesome, uh, awesome scholarship uh, program. Now, what are you hearing from students in terms of their needs, um, Demetrius? And then Zach and Niara, get ready because we want to hear from you. Right. Just in terms of, as, as, as you said before, that that. The first year, normally students are students and parents are able to get them through that first year, right? That second year as a as a rising sophomore is very difficult. And so you can see the fact that this is available to uh, rising sophomores, this is definitely going to help us retain more students. So I definitely see that. And and as well as graduating um, without not having a lot of debt. Debt. Oh that's, that's one thing Niara mentioned. As well, too, you know, is if you if you think about forty thousand times, you know, four that's that's a lot of debt to carry if you don't get any support. So, so I definitely hear that from from students. Well, and since he mentioned you, Miss Niara, tell us how it, just what comes to your mind as you think about winning this scholarship and how it's going to change your life. Um, really what comes to mind for me, hello everyone, but really what comes to mind for me is just kind of the the way it takes off. Um, Dr. Geddes knows I'm coming to him every year like, you know, I, I got to keep my academic scholarship. I need I need money from here and money from there. And I'm on like so many different scholarships and I've been blessed with so much um, recently, especially through New York Live. So just taking that stress off of me and and off of my parents, is it's really, really important to me. So I was really thankful oh. for that. Yeah. And, you know, what are you looking forward to most when you go intern with New York Life this summer? Because that was a coveted internship yeah. as well. Um, you know, to say I'm not nervous is an understatement, but I'm definitely looking forward to just kind of learning from um, not only a company with so much longevity and so much growth that has had um, over its 100 plus years of existence, but also just gaining um, professional development and technical skills from the team that they bring on, as well as the other wonderful minds they're bringing on through the internship program. Nayara, you are so impressive. You Thank are you. so impressive. Oh my God, I can just give you a big old hug. So Zach, tell us about you. I want to know about this 40,000 followers. How did you, how you find the time to do it? You got to come off mute, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I was muted. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so this 40,000 followers thing, me and a few of my friends over the summer, uh, you know, we all love the MBA, so we decided to start an account for it. And um, eventually, you know, we just kept posting and like I kind of tried to make us unique and it was something I really enjoyed. So eventually, uh, you know, we kept growing. We hit 10K, then 20K and eventually uh, 40K within the first year. Um, and what was very cool about that, uh, that's where I really kind of started to take an interest in finance because eventually, you know, companies were starting to reach out to us because we had a whole, you know, audience of NBA fans. So uh, SeatGeek, um, this drink company called a uh, Guru Energy Drink, uh, Body Armor, they are all companies that uh, we partnered with where we would uh, promote their products, we'd give free product, um, where we, uh, they would use our code and like we get like commission every time someone used it that we directed. So that's kind of my, my personal God, I thought it was so. just a fun thing. You sound like an entrepreneur, Zach. Oh my, no wonder you are in economics, okay? Let me just say. So, so tell me, 
how the $40,000 scholarship changed your life. Yeah, so uh, one, college is very expensive and it's, you know, continuing to grow. It's like kind of an issue we're constantly uh, having. So $40,000 just to have like an entire year paid off is, you know, is just really beneficial to not graduate with all that debt. But most importantly, it kind of shows my parents like, you know, that I appreciated them in a way. So, you know, pay, almost paying them back for, you know, all the sacrifices they made to me to get me to this uh, point in my Ooh. life. So it it's more about kind of for them showing them, you know, I really care about this. This is, you know, for you guys, you know, save you kind of guys a year of possible debt or, you know, paying it. So mainly just to kind of show them how grateful I am. You just them. gave your mama the best Mother's Day present. <laughs> Mother's Day is right. My gosh. So, so where are you going to be interning, Zach? Tell us about. Um, I'm going to be in Philadelphia. Uh, I had two locations. I chose Philadelphia. My favorite uh, sports teams play there, and I <laughs> feel myself as an East Coast person. So, I thought Philadelphia was a great fit. So, that's where I'll be interning this fall or this summer. This summer. Oh my God. So, so Niara, you can come off mute. What what is it that you want people who are listening now and these alum that are so interested in your success? What is it you want to tell them about you? And if you had a question for them, what do you think that might be? I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit. Um, okay, so I'd say if I had a question for any alum, um, first off, I love talking to all of our alumni. I learned so much from them and just like building those bonds when they come back for homecoming. And I loved, I can't wait to see them again. But um, a great question I have from them is how did Hampton help you, you know, pave the paths that you've, um, you know, trailblazed in your own careers? And how do you think that's really sculpted your own personal growth uh, within your professional life? So that's a question. So I know they're all listening. They're going to answer that and you stay tuned. But any any closing thoughts, Zach? Uh, you, you guys, you both are just so impressive. Any closing thoughts you have about? Um, yeah, so uh, I think just like having alumni is just very beneficial because one of the things that I kind of learned is, you know, criticism, you know, at first, you know, I kind of saw it as an insult, but I think learning is one of the best things you can do. So learning from people who've been there, who've been in your situation, who have the experience, I think is one of the best things you can do. So what I'm just really excited to do is uh, just kind of really learn, uh, kind of get my foot in the door and, you know, just improve overall. And let me just say this, Sarah, I know you can't say this, but all these people Okay, they make a lot of money. So that ain't bad either. Okay. So I, I hate to move into our next section, but we that puts us closer to QA. And again, if you have questions, put them in the QA. We now want to move to the alumni. So y'all stay tuned, but you can turn your cameras off. But I want to see Horace and Charles and Rob and Sharita and Tracy. So this is the part where I, we want to have some fun. And for me, I want every last one of you to tell me why you chose Hampton. When did you first fall in love with Hampton? You remember, you remember that? When did you first fall in love with hip hop? Well, this is going to be about Hampton. So Tracy, you go first. Sure. I mean, if anyone who knew me back in high school would tell you that all I talked about was Hampton. So I would say I chose Hampton very early on in the process um, in high school. So yeah, my parents would always try to encourage me to look at other schools, apply other places, but my mind was made up and set on Hampton. And it's definitely a decision that I've never regretted. It was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made, especially at only 17 years of age. Yeah. So you're from? I'm from Philadelphia, so I'm looking yeah. forward to, to meeting Zach when he comes here in the summer. Awesome. awesome. Sharita, what about you? Um, so, uh, Dr. Blow, cl close your ears, but Hampton was not my, my number one choice. It was Ooh. not my number one choice at all. Um, you know, I was, I was that student that says, oh, I'm not going to an HBCU. The world is not all black. I don't need to be around all people that look like me, yada, yada, yada. And so one of my closest friends, um, she had already had her mindset on Hampton and she asked me to join her for high school day. And so I said, OK. And so I came to high school day with my infant son and um, one of the student recruiters, uh, they held him while, while I paid attention. And I was like, 
this just kind of feels like home. And so I did the on-site admissions and everything like that, got in. And so the rest is history. But I, I don't regret, like Tracy, um, you know, you make big decisions at 17 and 18 years of age. And I never regretted that at all. That impact the rest of your life. It right? totally did. All right. Now, Horace, we've heard from you, Rob. Let, let's, what, why did you choose him? Um, I'll start from the, the academic standpoint. Um, so I came in 2002. Uh, and at the same time, that was the same year the, the Scripps School of Journalism was founded. And I knew that I wanted to major in journalism. Uh, so I thought that was a perfect fit. It's kind of interesting to hear all the comments today that like the Scripps Foundation donated into the program. And so it kind of just ties into like everything we're talking about. So that kind of got me. But I, I would say like Sharita, high school, high school day got me too. Uh, you just come on campus and the vibe is just, the energy is just there. It, it does feel like home. So I, oh, I, I, I okay. they got me too. <laughs> All right, this overachiever, Charles, <laughs> Mr. Triple Threat. <laughs> well, for, for me, I was, uh, I fell in love with Hampton when I went the first day I stepped on campus for the Summer Bridge program. It was a, uh, you know, it was kind of over for me after that, uh, you know, it was a fait accompli, but um, Hampton was the only choice I had. I didn't apply to any other schools. Uh, actually, I didn't really think college was in my future, to be perfectly honest, uh, oh, dealing, uh, dealing with uh, high school counselors and things like that. They were like, well, you know, we don't, maybe a technical trade is best for you and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I was encouraged by some mentors of mine to actually take the SAT and go ahead and apply. And I got in, I went to Summer Bridge. Uh, I met Flavor Flav when I was on campus and I was so... <laughs> uh, the rest is history, right? We That's had right. We with Chub Rock last night. <laughs> oh, my God, don't let us do some throwback here. All right, Horace, Horace I know I'm going to hear some A5A. I know I'm going to hear some A5A. In regards to why I chose Hampton, you won't hear that, but okay. you will hear um, the mindset of a 17-year-old kid um, who grew up in Richmond, Virginia. Um, you know, I played sports all my life, and I was very competitive, and I recall my sister applied to Hampton and she didn't get in. Um, so um, that 17 year old kid um, oh. wanted to do a one up, right? You know, so, so I, I should have known. I should have known, Horace. You just want to dog your sister. Is that what is that what I'm here? The Lord knows who we are and you <laughs> what he needs to use to get you to that destination, right? Uh, but with that, I um, had the opportunity to attend high school day. And actually, my cousin and I were supposed to attend. Um, and she ended up going to VCU. Uh, but high school day, I think, submitted it for me. So Hampton has such a rich legacy. And quite frankly, I knew a little about the legacy. You know, Booker T. Washington. Everybody knows about Booker T. Washington and whatnot. But coming back as a Hamptonian and working here, and then telling the story to others, like the folks at New York Life who are not Hamptonians, um, about the Proton Therapy Institute and about Emancipation Oak and about um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s mother and about all these presidents that have walked our this beautiful, amazing campus and the lives that have changed. It gives has given me a greater appreciation of how special, and I mean that special, this institution is. So Tracy, um, if you're talking to a group of students here or considering where they're gonna go, knowing how we nurture and take care of our own here at this institution, mm -hmm. why do you think New York Life is gonna protect them and take care of them if they choose your company? Yeah, I think it's very rare in your professional life that you find an organization that you work for that so closely aligns with your own personal beliefs. And I think that's what's key about New York Life. I joined New York Life via an acquisition. So unlike a lot of people, I didn't necessarily choose New York Life. New York Life was essentially chosen for me. However, once I joined the company, immediately I saw a lot of things that I just felt aligned with my own personal beliefs and my interests. One of them being, of course, New York Life's commitment to to the community. And this is a great example of that. So I think, you know, if anyone were to join New York Life, similar to what we have at Hampton, we have that same family feeling. You'll find that same family feeling at New York Life as well. So I think that that's pretty much what I would tell one of the new students. 
Yeah, and so Rob and Charles, both of you, I think, have some of the longest tenure, if I, unless I'm misremembering. So Rob, you 14 years, and you honestly, I'd say this, you look like a baby, but you, you, you came there and you stayed there. Why? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Um, you know, I thought I would have I would have been in New York like for a year and probably moved out to something else. Um, I, you know, I do have some I have other family members that work in New York life. Okay. Um, okay. But it's it kind of has the same how people said they felt at home in Hampton. You kind of feel that way uh, at New York life. Um, you know, there's not been a day that I've been at the company where I really haven't felt welcome, like unwelcome. Um, so it's just good energy. Uh, it's a company that celebrates, uh, you know, diversity, uh, as you know, as you heard all of, all of us talk about before. Um, so it's just been, and it's very, it's just family friendly. Uh, it's not like a lot of fi- some other financial service companies where that could be pretty cutthroat. That's just it's not, sterile. that's just not who we are. We, there's a saying we have that we're not, we're not Wall Street, we're, we're Main Street. And that just means like, uh, oh, like but little, you are in New York though. So. We are, yeah. <laughs> Ergo, New York life, right? So, um, Charles, tell us about what you do, because the folks listening, whether they're an alum or they're a student, one of the things we want to try to do is help people understand you don't have to be a student graduate, a graduate of Hampton, to think about New York life. You can be a career like you were, right? Yeah, I think that's right. And uh, just to uh, correct the record a little bit, so... um, I head up the uh, legal advisement for all of the company's insurance and annuity products, both fixed and variable. Uh, So a number of years ago, I became a board elected um, executive officer. So um, so in in that role, I've had an opportunity. Thank you. And in that role, I've had an opportunity to really be. Uh, on the ground floor with some of the uh, diversity and inclusion efforts uh, with re- on the corporate side of the house. Uh, I was also one of the first uh, chairs of the African-American Affinity Group at New York Life uh, that put forth various development programs and things of that nature, because I think at a place like New York Life, it is important for uh, our folks to be able to have the benefit of that mentoring and that sponsorship to be able to develop their careers as they move forward. And that is something that I know that New York Life has always been committed to because I've been on the ground floor of some of those efforts over the last 15 years or so. Uh, So I would say to, you know, any prospective candidate, uh, if you want to grow your career uh, and really be in a nurturing environment, I think New York Life is a place that could be suitable for you. Awesome. And Sharita, I am just so intrigued by your story. You, t- you, you talked about your baby. Yeah, your baby, I think it's a baby girl. Boy. Boy, baby boy, okay. In the video. Mm-hmm. And you referenced being a um, new mom when you came to Hampton. Mm-hmm. How, did you, how did you keep it going? You got your education. You you look at you. You're killing it in New York life. Um, number one, I have to thank God, and I have to thank my mother Praise and my God. father. Praise God. Um, um, because my mother and father gave me the ultimatum of either go to school or get out. Um, and so go to school seemed a lot easier than get out. Oh. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah. um, and so, um, you know, I graduated high school, and I, I really, you know, I, I didn't think about college, right? Because I had someone that I was responsible for. Um, and so my dad was like, "Well, you going to college?" And I was like, "Well, I guess so." Um, and so, you know, I started to apply. And then when I got to Hampton, um, you know, it was tough um, because, you know, when I moved to Men, um, you know, I, I could remember him. I stayed in Virginia, Cleveland, and my mom went through the back gate. And and I really felt like I could still hear him crying um, as my mom pulled away at the back gate. That was also my motivation, right? Because you have someone that's depending on you. My parents only gave me four years um, to get whatever was going to get done. It had to get done in four years. Um, and so um, because I was a first generation college student, I spent a lot of time in student support services. And so they provided so much to me um, and they're 
part of the reason why I was able to stay at Hampton. And then I was a part of the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communications, as the kids call it, Scrippers now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, they were able to um, help me as well. Um, and so it, it was tough, but it was also my motivation because I had four years to get it done. So you heard what Zach said, and that's a big deal. He thanked his parents and that scholarship, achieving that scholarship was an ode to them. Mm-hmm. So, Sharita, you just inspire me. You do, because you hear people and the excuses and why you can't achieve, but you did it. And yeah. I think for you to stay at New York Life, it must say something about that company that embraced you. Yeah. So, you know, New York Life has been amazing. And, you know, uh, we're here in Charlotte. And and so some of the things that have been beneficial is that we are a family. And so sometimes, um, you know, I've had to bring my child into the office. And the rule is, as long as they're not hanging from the chandelier and, and you know, um, you can bring them into the office because they understand. Right. Um, and so, you know, just having that culture here that feels like family um, and, and the support, you know, and, you know, Horace is my counterpart here in Charlotte. And, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, you're having those tough days and, you know, he comes in with a, a Bible verse or a, a story or, or something and it just kind of motivates you through the day. But you stay also because you know that what you're doing is making a difference. Um, and so uh, my motto is, is I want to put people in better places than when I first found them. And so for the last five years, I've done that. Um, and I've had great help. I've had great success. And so I want to continue to do that because it's fulfilling to me. Wow. So everybody, turn your cameras on. Turn your cameras on. This is an opportunity. Let's see, do we have any? There are no questions in the QA. It is 6.55. We were going to have 15 minutes or so for QA, but um, Niara, that question, do you remember the question you asked earlier? Um, I want to see what the alum would say to you. Can you restate it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I really just wanted to talk to the alumni and see how Hampton shaped you all for the paths that you paved in your professional life. Who wants to well, I think I think I'll jump in and answer that and everyone else can follow, I suppose. But for me, I would say the word was empowering in that I was able to see people who look like me in all sorts of positions of a power of power and authority and of magnitude and significance. Uh, and in, in my worldview expanded because of that. And because I saw that, I felt like, hey, well, maybe I can do it, too, if I work hard, et cetera. So for me, I think that's how I would answer the question. And if I could just chime in. Um, to Go ahead, to be early is to be on time. To be on time <laughs> is to be late, and to be late is unacceptable. Amen. And, and, and you say, "Oh my gosh, I'm tired of hearing that." But you just don't understand the importance of arriving and arriving early and being prepared when others around you are not. And so that has whether uh, that has propelled me in my career because I'm always going to be on time. I'm always going to be. Prepared. Prepared. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, the, it's the small things that was embedded at me uh, my freshman year that still stick with me. Um, and, and one of the reasons why I am successful, because I am I am always on time and I'm always prepared and ready to go. Um, and so that little small chant that you say or the cliche um, has really helped me um, in my career here at New York Life. Honestly. Tracy, and Rob, you want a piece of that? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Rob. Yeah, I was just going to echo what Sharita and Charles said. I feel that when you leave Hampton, you leave with such a sense of pride and such a sense of confidence that whatever you encounter is no match for you. You know you are equipped and probably better than whatever you're about to face. So that's the one thing I really feel is what I took from Hampton. Just that sense of pride and that confidence has really propelled me throughout my career. That's right. Rob? Yeah, so I said in the video, I was a student leader at Hampton. Um, you know, that program has the motto to go above and beyond. Uh, and I said, I have made it part of my DNA. Uh, and to me, it's like, it, you can apply to volunteering, you know, doing more than what's expected of you. But, you know, when you think about it in the business world, you know, just making sure you're, you know, doing more than what's intentionally doing more than what's expected. And from a competitive standpoint, it means outworking your competition as well. So it's just making sure you're you're pushing yourself, you know, continually pushing yourself and pushing your limits. So. Demetrius, you're a Hamptonian. 
and you happen to be an assistant dean. So I know you have two perspectives. It's, it's actually just amazing listening to their stories and how similar it was to my story. So, it's, uh, you know, like you said, leaving with the confidence, um, coming to a place, um, being a first generation student and how it's transformed you. Uh, so Hampton's definitely, it's, it's just amazing listening to you guys' story. And, you know, I could, you can tell it's actually embedded. It's ingrained. It's something about the campus that allows us to have that same experience. So it's, it's so just- The one thing, you know what I say, Demetrius? Mm -hmm. I know you. it probably is not politically correct to say this, but I believe it. And I'm a person of uh, transparency, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's not to poo-poo the PWIs. None of that. But Tracy's comment about instilling pride in yourself is such a big deal. Because when you leave the four walls, and I know it's more than walls, of this campus, you are going to be faced with some stuff that's going to make you, you know, reconsider everything. And coming to an HBCU around you. That phrase, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, the New York song. If you can make it at an HBCU where they say, girl, you know those shoes turned over, take those shoes back. You know that hair is whack. You know you need to be here on time. You know you need to, I mean, in a, in a way that doesn't tear you down. But let you know, so Niara, Zach, you, you, I don't, you won't, you won't recognize the value of this experience until you're like me, you know, 20 years, 30 years down the road, right? But I'm hopeful you get it now. And Horace, I think you wanted to share some thoughts, and then we'll go into a quick 30 second, you know, yeah, and, and and I'll say, I'm looking here at Demetrius, Dr. Geddes. I'm proud of you. Because uh, I remember we were on campus at the same time, and his <laughs> bag was the biggest. Uh, that book bag, he was always hunched over with it um, as he was making his way to O. And so um, I'm happy to see what you're doing now. Great work, brother. Uh, but I think overall, you know, as we look at this screen and so forth, um, even when we came together, it, it was nothing for us to instantly have that connection. Uh, you know, Brother White, he already sent me an email already, so we're going to connect after this, right? Um, White. It should be. His name is Charles White. It's an S on. <laughs> okay. So if y'all try to email him in New York, <laughs> you know, I'm going to live stop there because I'll, <laughs> I'll mess up. <laughs> There, we keep going for it. <laughs> and, you know, and relocating to Charlotte and, you know, the alumni who are here um, and then going into a office and finding more alumni layer through Sharita. Uh, we're everywhere. Uh, and, you know, I, I think that's the reality that, you know, there is that instant um, connection um, where, you know, you, you value it and you think back on these days. And, you know, the greatest things I learned at Hampton weren't in the classroom. Uh, they happen outside of the classroom, the relationships that we have. Uh, uh, those are the things that are eternal, I, I would say, that last with you to this day. Uh, your, your college roommates and, you know, those people who, and you're in like organizations, those are the pieces. I can't remember all of my business school classes, but I can remember those people who helped me along the way and supported me along the way. And we created those, uh, those relationships along the way as well. All right, 30 second speed round. We're over at 702, but this has been an amazingly rich conversation. And when I say 30 seconds, I turn the phone and I'm timing. So we're starting with you, closing anything you want to talk about. I'm not going to ask you a question. It's from the heart what you feel. And you can be less than 30 seconds. So, um, Tracy. Yeah, I'd just like to say I'm just so happy to be a part of this, to see, you know, the organization that I work for support another organization that's so close to my heart. And just want to give a congratulations both to Zach and Niara on your scholarships. It was so great to hear from both of you this evening. I know that you'll both do very well. Sharita. I just want to say, um, again, I mean it when I see Hampton uh, save my life. Um, so to Nayar and Zach, um, again, I know Dr. Blow says that you won't recognize it in this moment, but once you leave Hampton and you see the world, you'll recognize all of the things that you went through um, make you uh, 
better than the competition. Um, so, and I am so happy to be a part of the company that not only invests in its agents, mm. um, but its clients in into my illustrious university. Yay, Morris, 30 seconds. Indeed, <laughs> real quick, congrats again to the scholarship. You're a preacher, so I know you can. <laughs> But, uh, you know, looking forward to the impact you all will make during your internship. Uh, but again, you know, I'm excited for everybody who logged on. We're, this is the kickoff um, of, you know, getting familiar with New York Life. So I encourage you get familiar with us. Um, we're going to be here uh, to the alumni, to the student population and to the faculty and staff. Um, we want to work and to help um, help you all get familiar with us and the things that we're doing and what we're doing to give back through this partnership. Maria? I just want to thank, for, um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, it's so amazing to hear all these wonderful stories because, as I said, it's about culture at New York Life, and they really did mirror the two. Hampton and, and New York Life have similar cultures. It's about the people and what we can do with the skills that we develop through the partnerships that we have, and it's about making connections. So hopefully you guys can make connections. Yeah. Zach and Niara, I'm saving y'all for the close. Because you all, like I said, are the rock stars. Charles, 30 seconds. Yeah, I echo what everyone else has already said, so I'll be brief. Uh, uh, congrats to the uh, scholarship winners. Um, you know, I'm very appreciative for that. Thankful for my uh, moments at Hampton and this moment in particular, and to be surrounded by Black excellence. It's uh, really yes. mind blowing. Yes, Rob. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, just f feeling proud of Hampton and, um, you know, New York life and proud of this collaboration. So, you know, thanks to everyone involved and, you know, c congrats, Zach and Yara. Um, you know, looking forward to connecting with you guys in the future. So hit me up on LinkedIn or email me when you guys start your internships. Hit them up. Hit them up. <laughs> Sarah. I mean, it's just, it just reinforces everything that I already was feeling about the partnership with Hampton. And so it continues to just be mission critical for us to invest in growing potential talent and in making the most of all the education and professional opportunities we're going to have with alumni and students. So looking forward to it. Absolutely. Demetrius? Well, I was going to say, again, thank you for the partnership. Uh, so you've made my job a lot easier in terms of having student success. So thank you, for, thank you for that, New York Life. Christy. Yeah, you all are making me want to come go back to Hampton and get a degree. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to school. So congratulations, Niar and Zach. And um, thank you, New York Life, for this partnership and for highlighting not just the importance of academics, but our students being well as they um, enter Hampton, go through Hampton, and leave Hampton. And thank you so much, Dr. Blow, for putting this together for us as well. All right, thank you. Niara and Zach, you guys get the final words. You 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 just inspire me. I just Okay, well, um I just want to say thank you to the alumni that are on this panel um as well as New York Life for this opportunity. Uh it's very valuable to, you know, be a trailblazer for such an important um, endeavor between New York Life and Hampton University. So I am very grateful for that. And I look forward to those 30 years down the road that you're speaking of when I can look back on this and, and see, <laughs> see where, I've, where I've come from. Take your time and enjoy the ride because it's, it's nothing like now. Nothing like now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Zach, you're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I just wanted to thank uh, all the alumni for showing out again, you know, um, and thanks for like this incredible opportunity because the impact is just, it's just very impactful for um, us and it's going to help us out immensely. And I just, you know, look forward to learning more about this opportunity and, you know, uh, interning uh, this summer and eventually, you know, and like uh, Niara said, in, in maybe 20, 30 years, you know, I'll be here. I'll be one of the panelists, you know, right here. You'll be back Charles White. Opportunity, <laughs> so. Oh, this is awesome. I like to have fun. I like to keep it light, but this is really serious stuff. Get your education, do the work and you can, you can win. You, your life can be a joy. And um, let me just tell you one thing that's happening Friday night. New York Life, in terms of its alumni engagement support, is sponsoring something called, I think, Blanc Soleur. Uh, it's French. I'm just going to say the New York Life 
white party. <laughs> Starts at 5.30 at the Hampton Roads Convention Center. It's open and free, but there is a cap on attendance. And where you're white, and come on out. It's going to be so much fun. It's no heavy agenda. It's networking, fun. Uh, Margaret Miranda will say a few remarks um, about New York life, but really it's all about what they talked about, networking and relationships. I know, um, I think Demetrius and I are going to be there, but I'm not sure about the rest because everybody on the panel is all across the country. And the final thing I will share is if I'm going to ask you all right now, take a picture of your screen, because if you want to talk about talent, if you want to talk about uh, education. Now, granted, Demetrius Geddes's email is incorrect. I'm so sorry to have to say that because you will not get him if you email him at Demetrius.Geddes at Hampton.edu. You'll go to the city of Hampton. He is at Hampton U. Dot e -D -U. But um, check out the New York Life Foundation website, email Maria about all of those community engagement and philanthropy programs. She's the assistant vice president of the foundation, as well as a corporate vice president. New York, uh, Sarah Carter is the uh, a leader in the talent um, acquisition area. So is Margaret Miranda, who's over DEI as well. And here at the university around the scholarships, Demetrius is an excellent point of contact. And you can also reach out to me. So thank you for joining. Thank you for making this possible, all of you amazing panelists. Um, it is 710. Everyone have a blessed and good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.